Hey guys, my name is Allison and welcome back to Pause Let's Chat. Today I want to talk about how to pack for a grooming competition, what to pack so you don't forget anything. There's a lot of new people competing in Atlanta next week, so we're just going to chat about it. forget is shampoo um, usually there's always shampoo there that you can buy if you forget some um, but it's always best to have your own that you know works on that dog when you have them prepped so I use you have these Zuka bags that are pretty awesome um, that have started that came out and they're really great for groomers and I put my shampoo bottles actually in this bag because I can stand them up straight and they don't fall over. Okay, so the Zuka bag has these inserts. If you got them, they're great. I put shampoo in there so I know things aren't going to fall over and spill all over everything. Waste all your shampoo product. Um, I unboxed bed risers. So bed risers is something you probably might not even think about. Um, but most grooming competitions do not have tables that move up and down. They're electric, like ours we use at work, and they have stationary tables. And if you're tall of any sort, you will want to take bed risers. These ones are awesome. They're from Amazon, and they actually have, you can make them taller or shorter. Uh, but you want to make sure you have bed risers with you if you're doing like a small dog. Now, like if you're doing like a large dog, you might not need them. Okay, I usually like to keep my bed risers just straight in there um and i took one of these out so i could fit it all in and everything's real nice and comfy um i always take vet wrap with me because i need it for my groom dogs your packing essentials are going to differ depending on what kind of breed you're grooming and all that i always take some regular scissors so i can cut vet wrap and i uh don't have to use my grooming scissors a hair dryer for fluffing or anything if you need to kind of touch things up and you don't know to use the force dryer, um, which is something if you have a force dryer, I highly suggest taking with you because you never know what's available at the shows. So definitely take that. Take a loop that you can bathe with if you need that. Um, a loop you can compete with. Sometimes depending on your dog, that might not be the same style loop. So. This I actually keep in my groom bag. That's separate. But so all this is like bathing and prep stuff that I'm gonna need. Um, I always take quick stop with me. Heaven forbid you cut a dog in the ring while you're competing. Um, it's terrible, but it happens. And if so, just compose yourself, handle the situation as professionally as you can. Don't make a scene, clean it up and just either continue grooming you will be disqualified for cutting your dog um, or remove yourself from the stage if need be to get the dog cared for out of like public view um, so I always take quick stop and you know you might quick a nail so you need quick stop I'll take my Dremel um, I've got my five in one in here doing like sanitary regular prep got prep comb in here kind of everything you're gonna need to just prep your dog I'll put brushes in this bag maybe I'll put them in a different bag but in in the mic my, my bag that I take usually what happens is this goes with me everywhere and like only the other bag with like my scissors and my blades and stuff will go with me into the ring um, so you'll take your brushes Anything you need to prep your dog. So. We'll shove that right in there too. Some extra things depending on like what you're competing in, uh, you might want to grab. So like I just went ahead and grabbed like nail cutters. Like I don't know if your dog's nails might be extra long. Um, but rakes, if you're competing in stuff like rescue, you never know what you're gonna need. So I always tell everyone like take everything. If you could be working, so you're like 
go into work and you have no idea what you're going to do that day, what's on your schedule, you have to pack everything. And that's how you're going to treat it for rescue. You're going to take air cleaner, you might want to take baby powder, cornstarch, you know, if they're like super greasy. Um, for the ring, I like static spray. You never know how dry the area is going to be. Um, sometimes while you're trying to comb and scissor, the hair just like starts going and you can't even function. So static spray is really, really nice. Something I didn't pack a second ago was some um, brushing spray, scissoring spray. You'll want that. Um, hair sprays. This is where I have to start like going into another bag. But hair sprays and stuff I take into the ring. So I usually kind of put that in the ring bag anyways. But carding tools, if you're going to hand strip. Um, kind of think of the breeds I don't groom, like what they need, but just literally everything, especially if you're doing rescue, everything possible that you might need to groom any dog you're given, um, is what you're going to have to pack. Something for the competition ring that you really, that really, really, really comes like in handy are, um, so you probably aren't going to have something like this because sometimes you're going to pull and it's like this and it has no... Like this one has a spot, this one doesn't. And this grooming loop will not attach. It's not big enough to attach in here. And if that's the only loop you have, you're screwed. I have this little thing I found that I can put in there and then attach this. But if you don't have one of those, you can use zip ties. You can use like a carabiner sometimes. That doesn't always work. So zip ties are probably super smart. You can, or what I have done in the past, is I get in the ring, I look at my table. If I don't have one that has one of these, I will find another table and take the arm and switch it. If I didn't have something in hand that I like a zip tie or like this little piece um, that's off of actually another grooming loop uh, that I could use. So keep that in mind when you get into the ring. All right, so you don't want to forget your chargers, your chargers, your reveras, your uh, five in ones, your cordless clippers, anything like that and make sure they're all charged and ready to go. Um, you won't be happy when your things are dead and you're trying to compete. So make sure everything's charged, grab your charger. So I have two other bags here. I'll explain the difference in a second. So things I'm gonna take ringside, um, you know, if you're an entry or depending on where you're competing in, uh, rescue or something, you might want guard combs. You're gonna pack those. Uh, you're going to need blades. I actually had this awesome case by Loyalty that holds blades on one side and scissors on the other side. So this is actually, I just put all my stuff in here I need and put it into my travel bag. Um, you're going to need your combs. You're going to want different kinds of combs. You're going to want combs you're going to groom with, combs that you prep with, and then you're going to want a comb for your judge. Um, for me, that is my Vellus 10 inch little poodle comb. Um, it has teeth that are all one length all across it. Something like this is too thin to give your judge. You're like daunting them like, yes, find a tangle in my dog. Another thing is if they find a tangle in your dog, you're most likely disqualified. So that's why you want something that's not too close in teeth, but not too big in teeth and doesn't have a small end on it. If you don't have anything like that and you do have a small end comb when they come around for judging, just place your comb on the table with the, like, the part that's real tight at, towards them. So when they go to pick it up, they'll put the, the part that's got the small teeth in their hand and they won't be trying to comb through the dog with the small teeth side. Sorry, that's like a tongue twister kind of confusing thing, but just a pro tip there. Um, so make sure you've got all kinds of combs, um, but you're gonna wanna pack all this. I actually keep an extra loop in case something happens to the one I compete with. I have another thin-ish one that stays in my bag, and this one is actually one that will just clip up in here. Um, Clippers, I put my 5-1 in there, some stuff, and scissors, extra stuff. You want, kind of want to go in with like two straights, two curves, two chunkers, two thinners. Like, what if you drop something? It happens, you get nervous, the tables aren't super big. You know, you just want to pack everything in here that you can think of that you might need. Um, your sprays need to go in here, hairspray, different 
um, strings of hairspray, volume powder, your static spray, your scissor spray, all of this you want to make sure you're taking with you. This is a different kind of spray. You want to make sure you know what sprays work best on your dogs. Different brands might work better for different coat textures. You might want something a little different depending on what you're grooming that weekend. Um, you might need chalk if you're doing terriers. You might need, I don't know, because those are dogs I don't do, but um, bed rises. I'm trying to make sure I've got everything. Uh, you want to take your own force dryer, your own table, definitely, just in case you need that. Sometimes you don't. You want to make sure you take your palm out with you. If you don't have one, buy one when you get there. Um, some competitions require you to have a palm mat when you compete because they will end up selling the tables after the competition and they want the table to be clean. So a palm mat is really nice and makes your table look pretty. Um... Anything else? We've got our chargers, we've got our blades, we've got our scissors. I honestly feel like that's all I take. Um, hair straighteners, I don't have that here because mine's at home. And the one I use is also the one I use on my dogs. So you want a hair straightener if you need to straighten something like poodle ears, a bichon tail, a cocker skirt, um, cocker ears, anything like that you might need a hair straightener for. Um, you might want a curling iron if you're doing freestyle and you want to curl their hair in the ring. Things like that are some extra items that you might want to make sure you bring along. Um, other things you can do for freestyle, you can add accessories sometimes and sometimes you can't. So make sure you check the rules on that. But uh, you can use like bandanas, bow ties, bows and stuff like that and rescue. Um, those are also a really great way to up your groom. So if you want to pack those, you want both girl and boy options. Uh, bows, if you can use them, bow tie options, just kind of take everything. Like I said, if you just showed up to work somewhere for the day and you had no idea what you were gonna do, that's what you wanna take with you, especially for rescue. <laughs> Okay, so this random bag that I have here is my ringside bag. Um, it's actually a scrapbooking bag from Hobby Lobby, no joke. And it's become the best little ringside bag for me. Um, this is everything I'm gonna use in the ring. I pack this per dog I'm grooming. So if I'm going into the ring with my Bichon, I'm only gonna put in this bag what I need to groom that dog. That's why I kind of switch things around. So um, if I'm grooming Nikki, I'm going to make sure I have what I need for her. And I put my sprays in here. And when I get in the ring, you know, I'll pop these off and we'll start. We'll make sure we're good to go. Um, scissors. I will undo all my scissors. And I actually, this is awesome. It has slots. So... This has been, I bought this thing, not even for grooming, a long time ago, and it's been awesome. So you'll want your combs. Make sure you don't forget your judging comb. And this actually has pockets on the inside. Make sure you have something for yourself. You'll want water. Sometimes judging can take a long time. You might want a granola bar. Um, you might want Tylenol. You might, whatever you think you might need, go ahead and pack it in your ringside bag. Uh, water, Tylenol, a snack, anything like that. Because if you're competing all day, especially, you need to make sure you're staying hydrated because it can get away from you really quickly without you not realizing it. Um, things you might want would be like quick stop in this bag, like I said, in case you accidentally injure your dog. It happens to the best of them. So don't ever think it can't happen to you. Um, I'll put that in here. Paper towels, um, wet wipes. If you're one that has chalk, you wanna kinda clean up before you hand uh, over your dog for judging. Um, a towel to put on your table if you do have to chalk your dog for hand stripping or something like that. You don't want to destroy the grooming table for the next person that has to come behind you and groom on that table. Um, I'm trying to think of everything. I feel like that's about everything. <laughs> um, you might want to pack an extra smock in your ring bag. I mean, the weirdest things happen. Um, 
But the more you do this, the more things kind of ease out and you'll kind of figure out what you need and what all you don't need. That's why I've created this little ringside bag. I think Artero makes one that is a ringside bag um, that's just like this, but it's pretty expensive. And like I said, I just got this from Hobby Lobby. Um, so these Zuka bags are really nice. You can actually um, sit on them or use them. So like what I do is I will put my ringside bag on here maybe attach that around it so I know it can't fall off and I will work from here they don't really like tools on your workstation um, you can also if you needed it if you like have to hand strip and you need to sit down you can sit on your Zuka uh, these have been awesome bags <laughs> no they don't sponsor anything wish they did that'd be pretty cool they're not even groomer bags I don't think at all but we have taken over the world and use them for that purpose so you can sit on them um i don't suggest sitting while judging is going on it's not really the most professional sometimes though you just have to sit for like a second i totally get it um so use that as you see necessary but you can sit on these i stack my stuff up and i usually do still take all my bag of all my extra stuff with me because I never know I might have forgot something so like even though I packed this with just what I'm working out of this is all my prep stuff this has all my extra random crap I'm still taking this into the ring just because I'm pretty anal about it and I want to make sure I have everything I need and one another competitor might need to borrow something and I would like to think that if I needed to borrow something and somebody else had it that they would offer that so I make sure if somebody needs something and they ask and I do have it that I can lend that out so that everybody just has an awesome competition experience all the way around all right so just some like competing tips in general uh, when you go to check in get your table kind of unload your stuff and then you'll want to go and make sure you get your before picture. They'll have a little piece of paper that normally sticks to the front of your table with your name on it, your level. Um, the judges will come by and tell you how much time you're going to get to groom that dog. You'll want to take that piece of paper with you, maybe a comb, sometimes you don't need it um, for the before picture, but and your dog and your lip and everything and go and take your before picture if you do win something and you didn't get your before picture you will not be placed it'll go to somebody else they are very serious about making sure you have your before picture so make sure you have your before picture come back to your table just kind of set everything up and just start combing out your dog make sure you don't have any tangles make sure everything's ready to go and set be there early, be in the, don't be the last one to walk in the ring, be in there ready to go. Um, say hi to the people beside you, uh, sit. I mean, if it's your first time competing, be like, I oh, you know, I'm nervous. They might be able to help you out and say like, you know, it's all right, don't worry, it's, you're good. Or, oh my gosh, I'm nervous too. And then you're gonna know you're not alone um, because I promise you everybody in that ring is nervous every single time they compete. Um, just be nice and have fun, honestly. When your judges come to prejudge your dog, that's your time to make sure you tell them everything you need to tell them about your dog. If your dog, like my dog, I'm gonna be telling them this week, she ripped a huge hot spot in her neck and I did shave a little area with the 15 because it's like, it needed to heal really bad. Um, so I'm gonna make sure they know, hey, she has a hot spot like right under here. There was absolutely nothing I could do about it. And just make them aware of those types of things. So in the pre-judging, they'll take note of it. And at the final, like groom judging, they'll come around and they'll almost kind of look at that, but kind of disregard it if it's not absolutely perfect because there was already a pre-existing thing that you couldn't really help. Um, Sometimes it's beneficial to ask your judge, you know, would you like me to tell you the structural flaws in my dog? Um, sometimes they'll say yes, sometimes they'll say no, whatever works for them. Um, but sometimes they like to know that you know that your dog, what's wrong with your dog and how you're gonna fix it in the process of grooming. So whether they have a dip in their back or they don't have enough chest organically or whatever it may be, you might wanna just mention that. If your dog doesn't have enough hair somewhere, make sure you make 
you make that apparent to them because they might forget by the time it comes to uh, judging at the end and they might think you accidentally took more hair than necessary uh, when you maybe didn't already have it in the beginning. So if you don't have enough top knot hair, if you don't have enough hawk hair, if you don't have stuff like that, make sure you tell them at pre-judging, hey, I don't have enough of this, I don't have enough of that. So they'll make sure they write it down. You might wanna make sure you check your power strip at your tables before you start competing. Sometimes there are issues with the power strips. That way, if you know your power is not working and you have like a corded clipper or you have something that needs to be plugged in, let a judge or one of the people around know like, hey, this isn't working. So they can pause kind of everything until they get that back up. Um, Honestly, anything you have issues with, don't be afraid to let your judge know. They're here to help you. They're here to give you a nice critique, which you want to also make sure you stay and get after you groom your dog. You've just put in all this effort. After you finish grooming, they're going to judge your dog. You're going to go make sure you take your after picture, take a comb with you at that point, um, and then come back. Don't forget your paper when you go come back and then you're going to wait. They're going to announce awards, all that good stuff. And then you're still going to wait. You're not going to pack up your stuff and judges will come around and give you a critique on your dog. If you don't want a critique, you're free to leave at that time after awards. But I really highly suggest everyone to stay for a critique because that's why we do this. You know, we want to get better. We want to improve our own skills and that's really why we're here. So stay and get your critique from the judges and thank them when they're done. And most importantly, make sure you have fun and don't stress out because everybody is stressed out <laughs> and I know it happens, but have fun, enjoy it, encourage the people around you, help them if they need something. Um, be awesome, be a great person of the sport. Uh, don't make it seem like somebody might ever wanna do this because they met you and they're like, you competed and it was awful. You know, just be a positive output for all of us competitive groomers out there and it should be a really awesome fun time so have fun don't stress out if you see me at any of the shows come say hi maybe i'll give you a pep talk if i got anything important to say i usually don't but i'll try and help out if i have something uh uplifting that i can think of to say but i'm really bad at that type of thing i'm just gonna be like hey don't worry about it promise that's probably what'll come out of my mouth but you're going to be fine. Everything's going to be good and it'll all be just fine and dandy. So have a really good time. And if you see me around, come say, Hey, cause I'll probably be there, but not while I'm prepping a dog or anyone's prepping a dog. If they're doing something with their dog for competition, leave them alone. Talk to them afterwards. Um, <laughs> chances are I'm going to be zoned out and everybody else is too. And if you talk to us, we're not even going to be like, what, what, why are you, what do you want? So everyone's like that. We're just way too stressed to communicate. <laughs> so talk to us after and I promise anybody will answer any questions, take pictures of the dogs, all that good stuff, have fun, and we'll see you guys there. As always, please make sure you subscribe to my channel. You guys know I so, so, so appreciate that. Um, the Pauseless Chat t-shirts are available, so if you do want one of those, they're available for purchase for $25, including shipping in the U.S. I'm still figuring out Canada pricing for shipping, so stand by on that. But if you want a t-shirt, message me on Facebook, Allison Brooks. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Animal Arts by Allison. I will always post on Instagram when new videos on YouTube go live and you can view them on my story and all that. I might ask you all what you want to watch next. So make sure you follow me there. And that's pretty much all I got. So hope you all enjoyed this video and I will catch you all next time. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>